basically what we have here is a system that has sanitary loads, very simplified system that has sanitary loads um, during dry days and then on rainy days gets additional inflow from this uh, runoff of these two catchments. So let's start by analyzing the dry day. This is all um, simulations over time. It's not steady state like we've been doing. This was the scenario where we have no storm data. So this is for practical purposes, sanitary only. And in a sanitary system, uh, what you have is that you input the loading it, at your manholes. So uh, in this case, we have four cubic feet per second. Um, this happens to be uh, on a pattern because I'm running it for 24 hours. So you can see how the loading is affected. So those um, 44 feet per, uh, cubic feet per second are really at the very beginning about two uh, CFS and then at some point they become like 5.6 or something. Um, okay, so I just want you to understand where this is coming from and we have also sanitary loads at this other uh, node equaling three cubic feet per second. Uh, and what we have modeled here, it's actually an overflow uh, point and uh, what we wanted to see is if there was any flow when there wasn't any rain. So I'm going to do a graph here of the flow in those two pipes. Um, CO2 should have flow, but CO6 should not. So let's see. Okay, so that's CO6. It's that pipe that goes to the overflow, and we can see that you know the system would be operating um, as expected. So um, the way we have it set up is that sanitary flows would go directly to the treatment plant. Uh, but now what happens when it rains? So in this particular uh, model, we have a, we're using the SCS methodology to come up with runoff. So we're not using rational method. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, rational method is really good for peak flows. So just looking at picture of the worst case scenario. But when you're actually going to be modeling things over time, like we are here over 24 hours, um, then it's not realistic to assume that you're going to have peak flow throughout the whole 24 hours, right? You have it at some, you know, like one particular hour of the day at most, but the rest of the time it'll be a lot less. Uh, so a hydrograph method is better. And I'm going to show you what gets generated out of this particular catchment. So no runoff, no runoff, no runoff, no runoff. And right about there when the storm hits, you start seeing runoff. And then you get to that peak of 40 cubic feet per second. And then it declines again to almost zero. You know, it will probably, if I continue to model it, 48 hours or more, it might uh, go back to zero runoff. Okay, so this is the input that we're going to see at this MH1 in addition to the four cubic feet per second that are sanitary flows. Okay, and you know, it also happens to coincide the peak of your rainfall with the peak hour that we have in the sanitary um, flows. Uh, so once we do that, we get to see what happens. So let's graph quickly here, same graph that we had done before. So the blue obviously represents the stormy day. And then we have it, the blue is the um, conduit CO2. And then the red one is the CO6. So there is actually combined sewer overflow uh, being you know, passing through CO6. And you might be wondering, how, does, how did that split take place? Um, there is a diversion here, but the, sol the solver that I'm using at this very moment 
is the implicit. So unlike Stormcat, it can handle flow splits uh, really well. And the way we set that up here, okay, so we have a control structure. So there's a weir inside of this CO6 that prevents uh, low flows from going towards the overflow. So when it reaches the uh, uh, elevation of 314 feet, um, you start seeing, actually 311 is the elevation of the crest. So when the water level in that manhole goes above 311 feet, flow starts going towards the overflow. So this is a little bit different than the way we were handling diversions. Remember, we had to enter a curve in StormCAD. Uh, with this over, you don't have to. It would take care of uh, all the uh, details. <laughs> you wouldn't have to worry about that. Just say what kind of structure it is, and it figures it out. Um, so that's kind of you would, the way you would handle uh, those combined sewer flows. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.